Hello everyone, welcome to the session. In the previous session, let me tell you what are things we have covered in the previous session. We have covered basic if, basic if else, nested if. Nested if we are going to cover it today. Just naturally about like the remaining topics are nested if, nested if else. If a leaf, if a leaf else. And apart from this, apart from this, like now, these are the, these, are, these two are already done. And then these four are remaining and we'll go through one example from each type. Then I've told you about like my condition or comparison. In condition comparison, we can have numeric one, numeric comparison, string comparison, string comparison, we can have logical comparison, we can use logical operators basically, logical operators in the com comparison, and then we have used membership also yesterday, membership in the comparison as well. Then we have actually checked like if the value is null, if the value is null, like how do we, for example, I'm having a value like this, um, like name equals to null. I can directly say like an if name, then some statements here, print not null, like name is not null, and if name is null, we can definitely have a else block. Else print name is null. Okay, so something similar to this. We can actually we can actually use directly the variable name. That is like null null value comparison. Then we have gone to. Writing like in using multiple conditions, multiple conditions as well. So let us get get started with today's topic, and I'm just going to tell you about the nested if. The nested if. Let's say I'm just going to write a program over here. I'm going to write a program over here, and what it is going to do? Uh, let me do one thing. New Python file, nested if. Okay, so in the in the nested if, let me initialize a variable number two hundred. If name, so the number greater than equals 200, then I'm going to check if number greater than equals to 500, print success. Print success, else, just missing a, missing a colon here, print, like a failed. Then I can have another else block here. Print. I can specify some message over here, hello. This is the outer else block. Okay, now this is, I can specify here, this part of inner if, it's a print. 
inside the outer if inside the outer if now the success is inside the inner if and the fail is inside the inner else inner else block now look at here it's a very small program what it is doing is it is doing like in a comparison or like on the number we are over here number is initial is 200 we are first checking if number is greater than equal to 200 so in this case it is true then it will go ahead in a check so go ahead in the print inside the outer if we do have like you know two if else over here the nested if else okay if else inside if else known as nested if else now this part is the outer if part okay you can by chem does have option if you want to understand like you know in this if what are the statements we are having just minimize it you can see the like particular block if you want to actually minimize you can actually click here or you can actually click here anything is fine okay then you can click again to expand then we do have a inner if else block over here and what it is doing is it is actually checking if number is greater than or equals to 500 so the first condition is true we are going to get a message saying inside the outer if then it is going to check if number greater than or equals to 500 number greater than or equals to 500 is false so it is actually going to print felt that is inner else so it should print inside the outer if then felt in the inner else block now if the value i'm just going to initialize to 10 10 greater than or equals to 100 which is false then directly you're actually going to get hello this is the outer else block I can actually hard code this value, or else what I can do is let me cast it. The input, let me take it as input and then cast it. Okay, now enter a number so that we can actually test all the edge cases over here. Now, control shift of 10 to execute the program. Now, enter a number. I'm just giving 100. It is saying the, uh, the output message is like whatever, whatever we have discussed like you know, a while ago. The output is accordingly working inside the outer if held inside the inner, inner one. Now, if I'm going to give 900 as input, 900 as input. So in this case, what it is going to do, it is going to check like number is greater than 100, 900 is greater than 100. It is going to print inside the outer if. Then 900 is greater than equals to 500. That is also true. So it is going to create success inner if. It's, it is going to print inside the outer if success in a if now here i'm just going to execute the program just hit enter now here you can see inside the outer if and success is in a if if my value is actually less than 100 if my value is less than 100 in this case i'm just giving like 99 now here you can see hello this is outer else block because this condition is false so this is how the inner block is going to work and the inner conditions you can actually specify okay so now let us do one thing whenever we are having situation like this we can actually do the programming in a better way okay let me write another program to explain like now how do we uh, how to write the program the same program in a better way Let's say we call it as a chain conditions. Chain conditions. Let's say my requirement is I'm just initializing A equals to 10, V equals to 100, and C equals to 200. If I'm specifying if A less than B, then I'm going to do if V less than C, then echo, sorry, print 
success. In this case, A is less than B, B is less than C. So it is going to print the message success. If I run this program, here you can see success. This is how you can do it. But to make it a little better, what you can do? You can actually do A, get A is less than B. Here I can say and B less than C print success. This is also this is also doable. Instead of having like a two if, instead of having two if, we can use logical end. This is little better as compared to the previous approach. In Python, we do have another approach that is known as condition chain or in other programming, we call it as a compound comparison. Okay, compound comparison is this one is known as compound comparison. We can also have like a chain condition. In chain condition, it is actually very, very simple. Like how it is going to look like, you can specify A less than B less than C. A less than B less than C then print here i can say success the same program initially we have used nested if then the second approach we have used logical condition that is logical and here the third we are using chain condition a less than b less than c now in this case it is going to print success. All three outputs are actually same because we are using the same print of statement, right? Success, success, and success. So if you want to like differentiate, I can say like you know, one success. This is approach one. This is the second approach, and this is the third approach. Okay. Now in this case, if I'm executing the program, here you can see one, two, and three. So it does the same thing. So, so my recommendation is wherever possible, go ahead with the chain reaction, so the chain, chain condition. Okay, let us have another example on chain condition. Chain condition two. Let's say I'm having x equals to x equals to 10. If I'm just using if you x into 5 less than x into 10 less than x into 200 print success okay so now here look at here i'm just taking like now x value in this case x is actually hard put it so if i want to give int of input enter a number enter a number okay now if i'm going to give the input as zero less than zero less than zero let us see like you know, what is going to happen my input is zero it is saying nothing with this condition is not being to it now if i'm going to give one it will become one less than less than 10 sorry if a input is one it is going to compare like you no know, five less than 10 less than 200 Okay, so it is going to print success. To make it little readable, I'm just going to give a space over here, space and colon. Now, whenever the input is zero, let's say, I'm just specifying here, print this message will be printed when the input is zero. 
control shift of 10. Now look at here. If I'm giving zero, it is saying this message will be printed when the input is zero. Now if I'm giving, if I'm giving, let's say for example 11, it is it is printing success. It's not like it, it's not like we can only use like non less than greater than and all. We can use any operator. We can use any operator. Let's say for example to make you familiar here, if two into ten equals to twenty equals to four into five print twenty. Okay. Now here I'm just using like the two into ten equals twenty. Then we are using like now uh, four into five here, and it is also twenty. It is successful. So in this case, we are going to get result as twenty. Now see here the first one I'm just giving ten is success. The result is twenty. If I want to expand it, it's not like only three I can actually use. I can expand like this less than twenty five. And less than thirty two, less than thirty three plus one, less than five into hundred, then result equals to result something here, okay? Something here, okay? That's it. Now let us verify. 2 into 10 equals 20 equals to 20 here. Then 4 plus 5 is 20, which is less than 25, which is less than 32, which is less than 34. And 34 is less than 500, so it is actually going to print. It is going to print the value is, or we can, to make it more meaningful, we can say the value is less than 500 or so, anything as per your requirement. Now, if I'm running this program and giving my input as 5, the first one we are getting success, then second one we are getting 20, the result something here. Just think about if you want to actually do it, let's say for example, this is my statement, okay? And I want to simplify it. Let's say it looks complex to you. In the, in that case, what we can actually do is we can simplify it. Like if this statement is written and you are unable to interpret what is written, you can specify if two, two cross 10, equals to 20 and 4 plus 5 less than 25 and 32 less than whatever it is the value over here we can specify and then in this case as we are actually using a value so let us keep it as actually like this so we can actually simplify in this way okay let's like think about the first one if 2 plus 10 equals 20 then this is what it is written. We can specify if 2 plus 10 equals 20 and 20 equals to 4 plus 5, then do this. So my suggestion, wherever possible, go for like a chain, chain, chain comparison or chain conditioning to minimize your code block. Okay, so that is chain conditioning. And we are done with nested if else, and then the chain condition. I'm just going to tell you the basic if elif syntax. If condition, this condition could be anything. Then we can have statement or statements. Then here I can specify elif condition then statement or statements then I can specify elif condition n number of n number of elif we can actually use. It's not like only one or two, we can actually use n number of elif conditions, okay? statement here now let us write a program and i'll be writing a very small program 
I'll be writing a very small program here to make you familiar with the elif. Basic if elif. Let's say here we have a message. In the message, we're having transaction ID one, two, three, four. The product is, let's say, iPhone. And the price is 35K. Delivery location is Bangalore. Now here I'm just writing a condition. If iPhone, iPhone, let like membership I'm using like now, membership operator in the if. In previous session, we have gone through like now membership condition. We are reusing the same membership conditions over here iPhone in message, <coughs> iPhone is message, <coughs> print, order type, iPhone, and premium, premium customer. Okay, so now let me write another one here. Elif iPhone is laptop. Sorry, iPhone is iPhone in messages. Here I should actually give like a different value. It's a laptop in messages. print laptop order placed. A lift from having B tablet tab in message. Then here we can say print Tab order placed, no discount. That's it. So it is like now I'm having if elif. That's it. If elif, and I'm having like no multiple elif here. Now instead of instead of reading the message over here, like my message transaction ID one two three four, I've just had putting it. Let us do one thing. Let us take the message from console. Message equals to input of because it's a string, I can directly specify enter message. Now look at here. If my message will be this transaction ID one, two, three, four, iPhone 35 k Bangalore. Now control shift F10 if I'm running the program and then the message I'm passing is transaction ID one two three four iPhone thirty five K Bangalore. I'm just going to get the message saying order type iPhone premium customer. So this is actually placed. Now if I'm actually running the program again and specifying I want to buy a laptop. I want to buy a laptop. Now here you can see the message is the laptop order has been placed. If I want to specify, here I want to specify, my dream is to buy, is to buy tablet. Now here, here you can see tablet order placed, but no discount. But what is going to happen because this membership operators are actually case sensitive. Let's say I'm just giving, Enter message, iPhone, 
let's say iphone Fourteen. In this case, it's not going to print anything because it is case sensitive. Though we have iPhone here, it is actually looking for iPhone in exactly in small case. Once I cover like no string comparison, we can convert the case and compare. But the, for the time being, it is not going to work anything. If I am specifying iPhone fourteen, no action. Now, how do I tell the program? How do I tell the program that whenever nothing is matching, then we should print like no orders, like a system cannot process any order. Okay, so now let me write another program here. I'll just copy paste the same program and extend it. One moment. If a if else. If I leave else, Python file. Look at here. So here, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to print else print system cannot process your order. Here I can specify system cannot process your order, and I can specify here print. Better luck next time. Okay, so now look at here. Control Shift F10 to execute the program. If you are using Python, so now here I'm just giving iPhone 14. Here saying system cannot process your order. Better luck next time. This is how we can actually use if a leap. It could be anything. It could be anything. Now let me do one thing. Let me write another program where we are actually going to use identification operator. New Python program. If a leaf with identification ID operator, okay, ID of ID of stands for identification operator. Let's say I have a equals to ten and or I can say, I can initialize A, B equals to 10. The ID of A, B, if I specify here, ID of A, and then I want to uh, print ID of B, it is going to print same ID, because both of them are actually, both of the, both of the identifiers are actually same location, ID of A, ID of B. Okay, one minute. I'm doing a mistake here. It should be A equals to B equals to 10. Because whenever we are actually using A comma B, we should actually specify something like this, 12 comma 13. Because multiple values, sorry, if you are having multiple variables, we should actually go ahead with this approach. But in my case, I want to actually have the same ID. So I'll just go ahead with this approach, the first approach, control shift of 10. If I'm doing this, in this case, you can see the ID of A and B are actually same. Now I have C equals to 200. I have two C equals to 200. If I'm just specifying here, if A is not C, a is not C. A is not C means the ID of A is not ID of C. If A is not C, print, let's say both are different, or you can say A and C are different. A and C are different. Now let us see what is going to happen here. If I'm executing this, here you can see this is the ID of A, ID of B, and here A and C are different. A and C are different. Guys, one thing you notice, here we have like no 240. Let me run this program, Control Shift F10 again. Here you can see the ID got changed. Every time, whenever you're actually running the program, the ID is actually going to get changed, so that is how Python manages it, okay? So now, here, if we want to verify what is the ID of C, 
print id of c here you can clearly see that the id of a and c are completely different because the values are actually different 200 here okay so now this is the this is the identity uh, ID, identity of a and this is the id of like now c so a is not c this is identification operator we can actually is is not so now a is not c in this case it is actually printing a and c are different so let me add a if value here if i'm just specifying here if a is not b a and b are actually same but we are saying like no a is not b l if d is not c or b is c if b is c we are just checking if a is not b b is c something happened here Hmm. One moment, guys. So B is C. Then I can specify print. My screen is getting stuck. Print hello. Okay. So now let us look at here. Here, what I can do is it should go here and then we should actually go here this indentation issue okay so should work My screen is stuck now. I'm not able to proceed for that. Wrong actually with my system. Maybe one of the key got pressed or something. I don't know. So it was not working. So let me show you here. Okay. So now A is B, A is not B. We can say here print A is ID of A is not same as id of b okay now here i'm just giving let's say for example i want a leaf a leaf if a leaf i want to actually have the id over here so i was actually trying to adjust it c then print here i can say print v and c are same b and c are same look at here in this case we are getting the id of a and b are same because the value is also same so identity will be like no same c equals to 200 the identification will be like no different so whenever i'm actually using in this block a is not b this is not true then it is going to fall back to elif it is going to check if b is c b is also not c then we can actually have another elif block here here i can say if c is not a then print id of a and c are different id of a and c are different okay so now while running the program you can see it here like a b the id is same and c's id is different a b is a is not b so this is not going to execute it is going to check b is c b is also not c it is going to check if c is not a this is true because c is not a c's id of c is different than id of a then it is going to print id of a and c are different so the output will be id of c and c are different now here you can see the id of a and c are different okay so this is how we can actually execute the 
if a leaf plug okay so now if i want to use the combination of the comparison operators let's say for example i want to actually use a logical comparison i want to use um, like you know numeric comparison a string comparison or a logical comparison with identity operator membership operator those kind of oper operation is also possible let me write one program here and let us name it as actually complex comparison but ideally it is simple to look but as we are actually going to use like the multiple comparisons let me try it here okay complex comparison now i'm having like you know a equals to b equals to 200 okay and i'm just giving here if a is b and a value equals to 200 and a not equals to x and id of a like something like this also we can actually use id of like instead of is is not you can actually do this but i'll i'll suggest you to like no, don't use that because is is there right so we can actually specify here let's say for example b less than 500 in this case execute a print statement print condition looks little complex okay now look at here if you are having something like this don't worry you have to actually go ahead with the first value like what it is saying a is b okay if a is b in this case it is true then we are having a and logical and here it is going to do like is a value is 200 that is also true so first one is true the second one is true then we are having and operator here it is going to check a not equals to xxx which is true this is string comparison then we are having like you know a comparison operator that is less than com less than operator we are actually using here that is a comparison operator it is checking if b value is less than 500 then it is going to print condition looks little complex so the output will be condition looks little complex okay let's say for example i am having something like this if a is not b if a is not b a is not b is actually false because a is b or a equals to equals to 300 this is also false or a less than 500 print this is another complex example this is simple but i'm just keeping here like we are having a combination here what kind of operator we are using first one we are actually using identity operator then we are using logical or then we are using the comparison operator here also we are using the comparison operator this is for checking the if the both the values are same this is like now a is less than this is the less than operator in this case a is not b false if it is false then it is going to check the second condition is a equals to 300 this is also first false now in this case a less than 500 which is true so it is going to execute this is another example of complex example okay if i'm executing this if i'm executing this we can actually see this is another complex example okay now let me write one more program which is very very simple let's say comparing three values and identifying which one is the greatest number okay using any any approach let's say using nested if or using multiple conditions or using like na chain conditions we can actually compare the values let us see let's say greatest of three num in greatest of three num actually we are not going to compare like you no know, 
literally three numbers. The real time requirements is you are actually going to deploy one application using a Python script and you want to check what are the last three release IDs of your application. Let's say 27, 28 and 29. And you need to pick, let's say you are getting it to be a variable and you need to pick the like the max value out of it. We have mean and max functions, but programmatically, if you want to do to get the max, you can actually use a nested if you can use like you know, multiple conditions in the same line. We can actually do that, or else you can actually use chain conditions. Let's say I'm having three numbers. Now nums yeah, input of I can actually convert it to int first, then input of this one. And here I can specify, here I can specify, I think it's not going to work uh, because we are going to use a split function. Split is actually on strings only. Then I input of enter three numbers. Enter three numbers, and then here I can say like a split. Okay, so now nums, if you're actually storing it in split, you can actually definitely use like a num one, comma num two, comma num three, num one, num two, and num three. Now, I'm just going to do one thing. I'm just going to check if num1 let us do it differently okay num1 we can do it in different ways num2 less than num3 or we can say num1 is greater than num2 is greater than num3 then in this case let's say print the simplified version will be like num1 greater than num2 and then num2 is greater than num3. Now in this case, we can say num2 num2 is or we can actually directly print num2. Let us see like what is going to happen here. And there is a logical error here. I'm just going to tell you that number three. Now I'm just giving 10, 20 and 30. It is not giving anything. Now if I'm giving Control shift of 10. If I'm giving here 10, 30, and 20, it is actually not giving anything. If I'm giving, let's say, for example, if I'm giving 30, 30, then 20, and then 11. Okay. Now, in this case, it is actually giving us giving us 20, which is incorrect result, which is incorrect result. If we do this way, what is the simplified version? Num1 is greater than num2. 30 is greater than num2. 30 is greater than 20. Now, 20 is greater than num3. 20 is also greater than num3. No. So in this case, what is happening? It is actually, so, so 20 is greater than num3. Num3 in this case, 11. So it is actually printing 20 here. Now, if we want to do one thing, okay, before we proceed further, I'm just going to give one more example. There is some logical error here. Now, num1 greater than num2. Num1 greater than num2. Now, print. Print hello. Okay. Now, I'm just running the program. I'm running the program. Now enter three numbers. Okay. So now I'm just giving zero, 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 hundred. Then I'm just giving 20. Then I'm just giving 30. It is saying like a num one greater than num two. In our case, it should be like a hundred greater than 20. If it is like hundred greater than 20, then print hello but it is not going to print hello. Why? Because the input is string. Print, let's say hi. Okay, print hi. 
Now let us run the program. Step and execute it again. I'm just giving like a zero zero hundred or uh, some value here twenty three, then twelve. Here it is saying like it is printing high. You can notice here the first value is greater than the second value. What we are getting like in high? Why? Because it is all string and it is doing a ASCII comparison. Zero. The first value is zero, but in this case the first value is I mean first character or digit i mean in this case the the digit is two here the digit is actually zero so zero is less than two that is the reason why it is actually printing high to correct this error what we should do we can actually type cast it to integer type explicitly so what it is going to do here is what it is going to do here is in this case the same value if you're actually taking as taking as input right and running the program it should actually print the value of num1 is actually greater than num2 and it is actually going to print hello if you want to print like not the value as is instead of high and hello i can say like num1 here i can say like num2 here i can say num2 now in this case if i'm running the program passing the same input here it is printing like now this value is the greatest value this is like in the comparison so now let us go back to our previous program like now we are comparing three numbers and getting the greatest of the three numbers how do we do it so if number one is greater than number two and i can say number one is greater than number three and number one is greater than number three i int of num three num3 then print num1 else what we need to do or elif what we need to do elif if number 2 is greater than number 3 if number 1 is greater than number 2 and number 3 then it is actually going to print number 1 is the greatest number okay if any of these conditions are failing that means either number 1 is lesser than number two or number then is actually lesser than number three or maybe it will it will be equal to okay so in then this condition it is going to check if that condition is not working fine then definitely we have to compare if num2 is greater than num3 if num2 is greater than num3 then print in num2 else print num3 we do have logical errors here Num3. This is a very small program comparing of three numbers. We must have done like you know, n number of times in the college days and while learning, sorry, while learning like you know, any programming languages, definitely you must have done this. Okay, control shift of 10 if I'm doing it. If I'm specifying here 11, 23, 34, it is saying 34. If I'm if I'm running this program, there is a logical error. And if I'm giving like a 21, 2 and 2, and it is giving 21. If I'm running this program again, and then specifying 12, 32, and 11, it is printing 32. What is the logical error here? When we are actually specifying, when we are actually specifying, let's say for example, I'm just giving 12, 12, and 12. Now, in this case, we are actually printing number. It is actually going to print 12. But ideally, it should actually say us, like, you know, okay, the input is same. All the three numbers are actually same. But here it is saying, like, you know, 12 is the greatest one. Why? Because let's say I'm just saying here, greatest, greatest num3. Num3 is the greatest one. Okay. Now, if I'm running this program, here I'm just giving like a 12, 12, and 12. It is saying greatest is actually 12. Okay, so now this should not actually work like this. What we need to do is we need to actually handle this in the situation. Like how do we handle the situation here? How do we extend the code? We can specify if num1 equals to num2 equals to num3 and that should be like you no know, casted actually using int because the input is string so when you are actually taking input multiple values 
you can actually cast it like this or else if it's taking single value directly do the casting in the input itself now i can specify print all numbers are same all numbers are same now i should actually exit here because if numbers are same do not proceed further okay exit here if all numbers are same from running this program with 10 10 and 10 here you can say like all numbers are same guys the technical takeaway from this program is how to take multiple input in the real time using split this is the first takeaway the second takeaway is we can use chain comparison so this is known as chain comparison in this case this is known as chain comparison then the third takeaway is you can use exit whenever you want to terminate the program the fourth takeaway is we can have n number of conditions and whenever you are actually using multiple conditions in this case i'm using two conditions you can use logical operator like nand and our objective from this program was to write 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 a program which should actually print the greatest of three numbers but in reality these are the technical takeaway from this small program okay so these are the technical takeaway from this small program we can actually reduce the code block for the i'll just tell you in some time so now this is how it is going to work there is a concept known as shorthand if shorthand if two more programs for today so now shorthand if so in shorthand if let's say for example the basic if how it is looking like we are actually specifying condition right and then here i'm just giving if the condition is true i'm just having some statement here or print statement or anything here like the statement the shorthand if is if condition if condition then we can actually have the statement here then the statement in the same line and we do have a concept of shorthand if else shorthand if else it is like statement if condition else statement okay so this is how we can actually write the short end if else so we'll just try it out and then see okay how it is actually working so let me write a program new python file short end if else let's say i'm having like now a number equals to 100 print hello print hello hello is a string it has to be quoted print hello world if number equals to 100 something like this or i can directly give if x equals equals to x print hi like comparing two strings if two strings are actually in this case i'm just using like no hard coded strings you can actually compare any variables over here that's fine so now in this case this is known as short and if if i'm running this program if i'm running this program it is actually printing hello world and hi so no need of actually using a uh, print uh, sorry no need to write the print in the next line and using the indentation like num. You know, you can actually get rid of that if you're having only one statement so this is known as short and if ideally if you're having like you know 100 statements in a block prefer to do like you know, the blocks 
because uh, use indentation so that you can interpret the code better. But if you're having only one statement, then you can actually do this way. And if I want to print something like this, print hello, if num equals to, equals to 500 else else print hi python is just english python is just english like you now just say it is very very simple now look at here okay in this case we are saying print hello if number equals to 500 else print hi this is looks very simple let's say for example i want to print like this print shubbu if uh, I'm just giving like a location or subject, subject equals to Python, else print cloud, okay? Like print subbu, if subject equals, equals to Python, to Python, I'm just giving like Java, else print AWS cloud. So now here, if I'm running this program, the output will be print Shubu, if subject equals to Java, else print AWS cloud. What is your condition? Subject equals to Java. Let's say you are having this statement, not able to understand what is what it is doing. Then what you need to do is, you can copy paste it to somewhere and then see this statement you are not able to understand whether it is actually printing if subject equals Java, else print AWS, how it is working, I don't know. Take this out and put it before you. And then else what? Just move it to the next line. Put a colon over here and give a space. Let's say I'm giving two spaces. Now else, put a colon here. Then give, move it to the next line. This is how it, it should look like. Instead of doing all these things, you can actually simply do like, you know, the short end if else the short end if else is either you write these four lines or else write everything in the one line it is like print subo if this condition is true else print aws cloud this is how it should actually look like now if my condition let's say for example my subject is actually python python p capital i'm just giving here python so in this case, in this case, print Shubu if subject is Java. Now subject is Python, subject is not Java, then it is going to print AWS Cloud. So in this short end if else, the output should be AWS Cloud. Output is AWS Cloud. And in this short end if else, if subject equals to Python, subject equals to Python, that is true then it should actually print Shubu. In this sort and if, let us understand like what it is going to do. Print hello if num equals to 500, else print high. Num value is 100. So it is actually going to print num value is 100. Num value is initial is 200. So it is actually num value is not 500. So it is definitely going to execute the else plot. So it is going to be printing high. In this case, num equals to 100, print hello world, and that is the reason why we are actually going to get hello world. Hello world as output, okay? And x equal to x, this is the hard-coded value, and definitely it is going to print high. So these are the edge cases of certain defaults. Certain defaults and certain defaults. Hello world. Hi, hi, AWS Cloud and Subu. As we discussed, this is how it is going to work. Okay, so let me summarize what are things we have actually learned in the if conditions. The basic if, basic if else, nested if else, if elif, if elif else. Okay, short end if short 
short and if else then we have covered like in you know, a comparison is condition in the condition or comparison we can have numeric string membership conditions and membership operators we can actually use we can use logical operators we can use logical operators we can use identification operators identification operators and then we can definitely use chain conditions chain conditions or chain comparison okay so numeric string membership logical conditions identification operators all these things you can actually use logical under logical we are having and not and or identification is and is not membership in not in string in way you guys know like that is equal not equal and all these things you can actually use numeric we can actually compare numeric values less than less than equals to greater than greater than equals to equals to not equals to and all these things we can actually do and we can use compound comparison or here in python it is known as chain conditions we can definitely use like no chain conditions or compound comparisons like multiple conditions we can actually join so these are the edge cases of conditional statement so in the control flow the first part was like uh, conditional statement so we are having uh, these are the conditional statement like six conditional statements in the conditional block then in the next session i'm just going to cover about the loops and in python we are having while while else for and for else so this is our